For more on these unique challenges, I want to welcome on Cabot Phillips, the editor in chief for Campus Reform. So Cabot, you recently wrote a piece in The Hill that I thought was very interesting, saying that the current coronavirus pandemic is highlighting some of the flaws in our higher education system. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I think the first flaw that it's highlighting is the economic element. Universities have bloated budgets. They're spending far too much money. They're, they're spending beyond their means. And now at the first sign of economic turmoil, of course, it is a big economic, uh, you know, turmoil. But at the first sign of this, they're starting to shudder. They're starting to be in trouble. They're starting to look at taxpayers to bail them out. And I think one reason for that is because of how much money they're spending. And I think a lot of college students right now who have transitioned online, they're realizing, wait a second, I can still get that degree. I can still get that piece of paper and interact with my professors and peers, still stay on track to graduate. What exactly am I paying $50,000 for on campus? What is all this money going towards if the university could all of a sudden overnight transition online? So I think it, there is kind of a threat being posed to the traditional university system right now, where obviously there are benefits to being on campus, getting that traditional college experience. But I think there's a threat right now to, on, to, uh, to the traditional model where a lot of students are realizing, I can still go to school online, and in the future, I'm going to be able to save a lot of money if I do so. So I think that's kind of exposing a little bit of the flaw in the system where universities don't want students to know how easy it is for them to get educated online. And I think that is going to be a problem for universities moving forward. This coronavirus crisis could be a little bit of a catalyst in changing the system uh, for many students. It's a little frustrating to me, actually, when I see some of these colleges asking for a bailout, as you're saying, or at least tax relief, acknowledging the fact that they have billions of dollars in endowments, too. That's something that I actually find a little personally troubling, and especially because the costs are often put off onto the students. And you've also talked in the past about the high, higher rates of tuition for a lot of these students right now. Why is that a rising issue? For example, our parents, when they went to college, they weren't paying nearly as much as we are nowadays, and we're leaving college with debt uh, in an exponential manner. Why is that? Well, first to touch on the endowment point you made, you bring up a great point. Over 100 universities have a billion plus dollars in their endowments. Mm -hmm. I think the average taxpayer would say, dip into those savings the way that average American families are dipping into their own savings before you start looking to fellow taxpayers for bailouts. And with regards to why the cost of college has, has gone up so quickly, so fast, I think there's two main reasons. Number one is just the bloated bureaucracy you see on campus. Ever since 1980, the amount of money being spent by colleges funding academic positions on campus has stayed roughly the same since 1980. But there's been an 800% increase in spending on administrative positions that are non-academic. So universities have these giant budgets. They're paying six-figure salaries to non-academic advisors and these diversity officials and the Center for Inclusion and Equity and the you know multicultural centers and all these things that cost millions of dollars in payroll. Universities are spending money on that. And then the second element here is the federal student loan system. Universities have no incentive to lower their costs because they know that there's a steady stream of students that have federally backed loans that they can take out $40,000 a year from the government and continue to pay those salary or those tuitions, whatever they are. So universities say, Kids are going to keep paying them because the government's going to keep lending that money, even though they're high risk lenders or, uh, you know, loan receivers. So they keep lending that money because they keep can raising costs. There's no incentive for them to lower costs right now. And I think that's why we need to find ways from a market perspective to get them to lower those costs. And when it comes to these institutions, too, you don't have much choice once you're accepted. Uh, you're kind of accept put in a situation where you either have to accept what they're asking you to pay or you can go somewhere else. And now a lot of those students, for example, who went to these schools who paid a lot of money in order to attend them are now taking online classes. And some of those students are saying we should be compensated for that. Uh, you mentioned earlier before that there is a benefit to being physically on campus sometimes. There is a benefit to seeing a teacher, having access to a teacher in person. Some people are just better learners that way. And now they're being asked to go strictly online or remotely. Where do you stand on that debate as to whether or not the schools should be compensating or at least giving some of the money back to those students who paid for full-time classes? Yeah, well, I think there's there's a middle ground to find here. I don't think it's all black and white. We've covered pretty extensively at the Leadership Institute's campus reform how a lot of students have lobbied and successfully gotten back refund money for things like rent and for their food plans, because those are things that the university is no longer able to offer them. So they paid for five months of dorm rent, but they're not going to be able to live there. The university, I think, should be expected to give that money back because they're not providing that service for them anymore. The education element, the tuition rates, getting a refund there is a little bit more tricky because the university on their end, they were forced to send students home. It's not necessarily their fault. And they're still holding up some part of their end of the bargain. They've moved online. Students, for the most part, will still be able to stay on track. 
still get that education. If they're graduating in the spring, they're still going to be able to do so. So the tuition element, it's going to be a little more dicey as far as whether students should get refunds there. We'll wait to see what universities do. There are going to be multiple cases. I'm sure there already have been a few of students taking universities to court, trying to get their money back. I don't think we're going to see refunds offered for tuition in the spring. Now, however, once that moves to the fall, I don't think universities will be able to get away with charging full tuition rates in the fall because it's going to be very likely all online based on what we see so far. And if it is online, then universities have to have time to prepare for that. And I don't think students are going to pay full tuition rates for the online experience because it's not going to be worth it in, in a lot of their minds. Yeah, depending on the success of these programs, too, this may become in a sort of new normal. I mean, if students are getting the same type of education at a lower cost, while at the same time not filling up a lot of those dorm rooms that you're talking about, this may be something that becomes a little bit more normal than we've seen in the past, as if online classes weren't already becoming more of a prevalent thing. So I think that's going to be really interesting to see not only going into the summer, but as you were saying in the fall when students are once again going back to classes. But Cabot Phillips, really appreciate you coming on tonight and breaking down this angle that is not covered enough during this pandemic. Thank you.